kind of jamming some music together, feeling out what we're going to go into the record, into the studio to do. Charlie arranged it for us to go to Stingray. To Stingray Studios. Yes. In West London, Alpertan. Well. Yeah, Alpertan. So we yeah. go up the answer, the thing. Right. He don't mind, and we don't mind. Give to give, and then we use it to create this album. I went to Jamaica and brought the tracks with me. And uh, they're looking for a better mix and all those things. So we want to create more tightments in the track and we want more strength of the music and we know so in Jamaica you get a more energy of the music than here. So basically he go went there and get some more inputs of the music yeah. to help the everything that we try. The honorary Dean Fraser O D of the great Dean Salute. Fraser that come Salute on the Salute Mr. Fraser. Great big man. Great, great musician. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Another and a trumpet player out there, like a young guy that was is coming up. Also, we had a couple of vocals, um, backing vocals that is, for the tracks. Magoo's got a track that he sang, one of the tracks that he sang, and I put some BVs on it. A young singer. Sound good. Yeah, by the name of Aisha Bell. Aisha Bell, that's it. Yeah. And um, not to mention over here, we do have certain ownsmen as well that we use, like Henry Tenney, mm. who is a prolific trombone player, and Megumi Misaku from Japan. She's also playing saxophone. And the other brother of Patrick, of Henry, Patrick Tenney plays trumpet as well on some of the tracks. And what's the other guy? Dave. Dave, Dave. yeah. Dave usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. him do come and do some session and yeah, up on his own studio also. So we have a local compact that we have. I like forgot there's know. Winston Williams who plays a few percussion and stuff. Which is known as Horseman. Oh, well, 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 Yeah, and um, who else played on it? Kenton Brown. Kenton Brown and um, Keyboard as well. And Cyrus Richards. Cyrus. So we got into Cyrus, the boss mm -hmm. one. It was quite a talented set of musicians, I'd say. We've always incorporated musicians from Jamaica and the. Uh, I forgot to mention Desmond, Fat Fingers, Coke, he used to play keyboards for us. Um, Clifton Bigger Morrison he used to play keyboard for us. And when we did our first shows, like it was at the 100 Club and places like that, we was working with some of the Jamaican artists, Prince Farai and Bim Sherman and Shanti Rai and Prince Amma. You know, Prince Farai, he was the one that really brought a drummer. He brought the style Scott in as his session drummer as a session coming in drummer. from Jamaica. So we just mm -hmm. share along the, the mix, you know? So we always, funny enough, as you mentioned it, yeah, we always have that kind of thing, you know, where we had some Jamaica input. Alpha School is a place where most people end up for support like if you don't have nobody around you and you get any problem they will bring you beer and support like that but i'm coming from the hills of another bingy hills before him i went to alpha that's where i'm from that's where we chant drums and everything so being to alpha is just a I extend on my strength to say at least I've been some people I'm watching music playing more and see more people doing activities of music. So I was a youth growing up. So basically um, I wasn't a part of the player but I was growing amongst these players. So basically when I come here um, and I heard about my brother making band and he was a part of it too and I decided to 
be a part of it. So I turned to the music and thinking of the half uh, life where I'm coming from, that was my strength to come here and to be a, a part of that life. So I guess that helped me to come here and be what I am as a musician at this present. When I was there, did lately um, Tan Tan, Rico, you know, and many more than I know, but as who I can recognize to grow with to say definitely, you know. Some of the singers them three of us was different places so we are linked up in kind of home. One place to another to another and then we are end up to Alpha and then Alpha is the spread out place. So most of the singer who I met also like ghosts, you know, um, Wayne Wade and the whole lots of singer and musician more than I did recognize I can yeah, remember, you know. So it's a history place that I don't even did know the history of that place until I've been going to. What's the yellow man connection? Yeah, yeah, yellow man. <laughs> yeah, like yellow man now is 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 one of the one that I actually take on both because when they as him said in parents threw him out and we was there and I was there who go and collect him and bring him to the nuns. And then the nuns them leave him with me and my friends them to take care of him until I end up leave the school and gone to Alpha and I leave him the, the school um Swift Purcell. That was one school that was in um Mapen area and that's where we all used to be. Then we leave there and we end up turning to Alpha. I leave I leave Sick person and went to Alpha before Yellowman. So when I leave Alpha and come to England, that's when they say Yellowman gone to Alpha. So until we meet up over here and have a meet up talk and him say, yeah, yeah, you know, that's the separation between me and Yellowman. This particular from creation. This particular album is actually the first album that I've, I've played on. It was my first time in the recording studio. How that came about was um, we, uh, I was friendly with a friend of Adrian's. Um, his name was um, Junior Williams, officer. And he knew that I was learning to play guitar and so on because the actual person who taught me to play guitar was his friend which was my brother-in-law in the end but he taught me how to play guitar so he knew that I was kind of practicing and was really keen and interested in it and one day he came up he came looking for me and said listen get your guitar I've got a friend of mine is doing a session he needs a guitarist to play on the session i was excited and i was glad of course i grabbed my guitar and we went to a studio in the city it was gooseberry studios the okay. first studio i went to which is blackbeard a lot of people Mark dennis Sadi. bovell a lot dennis, of dennis bovell was the engineer i think yes. that's where we started our nice question history to it. <laughs> I guess that. Dennis Bovell was the engineer down there. Blackbeard, Safara. It was me, Bigger Morrison, Fish Clark. Bigger Morrison. Mm -hmm. Fish, Clark is, Fish Clark is the brother of Johnny Clark, the singer. So Adrian had a session. I went down there. That's the first time I met Adrian. I was just beginning at the time, to be honest. The engineer says, oh gosh, let me do it. Because I couldn't play guitar, you know what I mean? But no, Adrian said, nah, it's okay, it's all right. Just let him do it. And that was my first introduction into, in, into it. Okay. I'd never been into the studio before, no nothing. Adrian had pity on me and, said, and allowed me to continue to do the session. And we did the session, I went away, leave, you know. And then a few months later, Adrian called us up and said, you know what? People who love it in Holland. Everything has its own energy. This has a perfect energy. And with this album alone, we could do nothing else but this album. And we run the dance, see it. I like music with something 
strange, you know. So I always believe in something must be different within I music. So as this album come with different mix coming down from space, landing. You understand me? There's some different thing and some different sound. We was taking it to another, I like the design and another frontier <coughs> when we when we was doing this. Yeah, like coming you know, out we of didn't space. Be just the moment for the times is it's, it's very effective for the time it came out. Very effective because you got to remember this. Before any of this type of thing, you know, to me, there was a, there was one type of a double artist that stood above all, Augustus Pablo. Somehow, I didn't get this thing done, but that's straight. This is straight. This is a straight thing. All, everything is straight. This ain't straight. This ain't. This is. This is curved. This is cut another way. Still reggae music. Mm. It's just cut a different way, and it's going a different direction. Yeah, man, come from different. Countries. Not the same. Come. Come from the UK. Mixed with Jamaica. Jamaica outer. Mm, so. Jamaican outer Jamaica type of energy, mm, with yeah. a different direction. Yeah. Now looking at the picture now, I think it's pertinent to say how I joined the band. This guy here, <laughs> I don't laugh. I never this. this guy here, a friend of mine. Listen, this brother I didn't know, but I met Adrian, um, Style, and Lizard in a local record shop in Kensal Green called Gangsterville, and this record shop happened to be a place of note. A real place of note. For some reason, don't ask me why. But um, what, what's the band called again from there? Um, Tradition. Tradition. Tradition was based there. A mm. band called Tradition, who was signed early. But this this shop had everybody coming and going downstairs and playing music. But put that all, throw that all away. They had an ongoing record shop that everybody used to be there, and it was for, for every day of the week. Everybody used to be there. But especially on a Friday, when people spend all their money mm. inside that record shop, I was there. And then one day I got there and I bumped into my old friend and Adrian, Star Scott, Prince Fire. We met the whole of them in the record shop one time. And I was invited to join the band on that occasion. Mm. In, the e in, the in the evening, I went to Tavistock, because that's where the man was rehearsing. And to me, it was like a sound system was playing. Yeah? I'm telling you, and I'm no idiot. <laughs> All right, man. You sound like a sound system I play, and I style Scott Daly caught the drum them. And nobody never used to beat the drum as hard as me know style it sometimes. I don't know, how, I don't know, other people's opinion, that's how it sounded to me. And I entered the arena from there. I remember before I actually joined the band going on a tour, and it was the Princes Prince Hammer, Prince Farai, and Bim Sherman. And that was a beautiful tour. And Farah has seniority over them. Don't ask me how it works, but he did. He has seniority over them. Prince Hammer, great artist. Lucian, beautiful artist. Prince Farah, I'm telling you, the man has seniority over them. It's the age, I believe. I don't know. I don't know who's old. He was a businessman over there with his record shop. Yeah. And them things there. So yeah. they're coming from over there, they know that he was before established. You know, established, I yes. Said. Because yes. he really did do it. He bought Star Scott, as I said. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he brought um, Prince Amma. Yes. And yes. Uh, Bim Sherman. Bim Sherman, yeah. And that was, our, that was my first mm. show. That, that tour, I went on the tour. I didn't play on the tour, but it was, I was just there, I was just present. We was going to support Prince Farai, and we were flying out, and we were driving to the port. We were taking the boat, actually. And we was taking the boat, um, the in, ferry. Yeah, and then in the vehicle, driving to the yeah. ferry. We didn't even get to leave out our London that good. Because he was in, he was crying and in so much pain, Sick, yeah, mm. and so on, that we had to stop at the hospital and leave him. And we left him there, and we went to was it Germany? I think it was Switzerland or Germany. Mm. And you know, we was all there working out the money, saying that oh, well, he's not going to be here. We're going to have. Because there's more money to share up 
you know what I mean? Like we was, I was in a great mood. We, oh, we was really, you know, thinking that, yeah, we're gonna be making some extra money tonight because he's not here, you know, we've got to play. About 10 minutes before we were to go on stage, we only see the door kick open. <laughs> and it was Prince Farai saying, What's up, Trina? <laughs> So that plan of us that getting extra money, the whole thing. yeah, went out out the window. <laughs> Free Farah is a man. <coughs> We're on stage, you know. He's there backstage in the back, being sick, sick vomiting, and mm. and then as soon as they say, "From Jamaica, Prince Farah," he gets better. <laughs> he always gets better. And comes on, you know, and do a brilliant show as well. Match up the show. He's one of the first musician artists that we played with. We've travelled all over the world with him. Also, that's one of the first tours that we was doing was with Prince Farai, with um, Prince Amma, Prince Amma, Bim Sherman. Bim Sherman. The man's name is Keith Logan, aka Lizard. The man who originally asked I to join the band. Flatmate, whatever you want to call him, he's no longer with us, but he is always with us. How does that make any sense? He's always with us in spirit. Because he, to me, was a very, very firm corner, natural musician, learned strong come up stronger and stronger learn to play trumpet as well he used to be blowing the trumpet as well as playing the guitar trombone. at night trombone. is it trumpet? yeah trombone at night time instead of sleeping he'd be playing the bass or he'd be blowing the trombone I'm better here he is should have taken better care of yourself boy here he is and i meant keith lizard logan uh, started with me we used to go and rehearse or watch the Spartans rehearse and when they'd have a break me and him would pick up the instruments, he'd pick the bass up and I'd pick the guitar up and we'd be jamming and trying to play um, when, when the uh, other musicians have t are taking a break. Lizard is very talented, he was a very talented bloke. You know, he can sing sing a lead song and play bass, which is a very difficult thing to do. But he could do it. He was a very good singer. Um, he know he knows a lot of tunes, he knows the like the songs and so on. And we did many things together many recordings one thing i remember is that um he used to be a mechanic and sometimes we can't find, find him. him and he's underneath a car <laughs> he's underneath a car somewhere I remember we, had a, yourself. we had a tour to do and we was supposed to be rehearsing a couple of days before sure. to go to the tour couldn't find him Okay. Until I went into a garage in a council estate and there he was working. In Chalky. He's a man who will come to the shows in his overalls, straight from underneath a car. Mm -hmm. And he would come to and do the show. Concert. And he was excellent. No. Yeah man, that was the last virgin that we really have around we are the band and he also make the weakness of some of what's happening within the band because when you lose a part of the band member it's like it's like you lose a part of something which is a part of the history. So basically it was a long time for we even get back around to certain connection because the main man was a, was finished. So from his, from Lizard Lou die we could not you know, it's a part of breaking up our 
feelings also as the band creation them. Yeah, it took us a while to to really after his death. To took, see beyond the death. It took us a bit of a while to um for us to kind of get back into playing <laughs> creation level yeah. stuff and so on, you know. As I told you it was very um a strong Final. person in the running sort of thing. He was he could sing and he could play the bass, he could fix cars, he could fix electronic stuff. He can do many things. Is a, we really he's a very handy man to be as a part of the band member. Because it's a tribute. if it's you a understand. situation we on the road and any problem, he's there as a part of the mechanic to make sure we can make our journey. He's so teaching, he's, teaching he's always teachers. play a part of interest in you know and as we say the original BAC that connected us creation really. So he's a part of the still gone. The original bassman. I was always still drumming around and touring with different artists, musicians, which I still do. And I was just there at the same time, just playing around with different musicians, just to keep the music live. You know? Because if nothing happened with a new song with Creation Rebel, I was going to give up because of that. So. My blood are full music, so I have to move on one step to the other. So I've been working with various persons, you know, just doing one and two things in the studio and things like that. I was doing a lot of backing, studio sessions, studio work for people. I own studio work, doing studio work with Adrian. I'm distributing tunes and promoting songs. I was doing some backing work. You know, I used to work with Freedom Fighters too. Charlie used to work with Freedom Fighters. And but the rehearsal room um, is where we used to get together, and other musicians used to come there. And it was then that I linked up with some of the musicians that was visiting the place, namely Carlton Bubbles Akilvi and Donald Campbell. Kenton Fish Brown, and then I formed the Undivided Roots band. That was about 1987, something like that. Um, we was doing a lot of live work, going around touring. We played with around, or I played around, around 250 different artists, backing over 250 Jamaican artists. Um, American of one or two, Dennis Brown, Culture, Freddie McGregor, Sugar Miner, so many artists. Then at the same time, at the rehearsal rooms, we, we started um, uh, our label and we started to release and record some of our recordings. And Don Campbell, who was the lead vocalist for Undivided Roots, left. And so we just sort of turned the band into Rough Cut. A lot of work we was doing, you know. So I was always in it. I was working at Jetstar for about six, seven years as one of the main producers down there. I done several albums down there. I worked with Gregory Isaacs. I did an album with Gregory Isaacs. I did an album with Freddie McGregor down there. I did an album with Maccabee down there. Don Ricardo album, uh, Donna Marie, couple of albums. So I was doing a lot of production as well while I was down there. When I when I met the um was invited um by Lisa to come some of these come of these gentlemen here. I was in the process of making an album I was in the process of making an album with a, a brother named um, Byron Life Hook. You've heard of this singer Omar, it's his dad. He was, I forget what his band was named but he was a, he, he was with a popular band in the sixties. That's the dad Byron Life Hook. And that's where I met, um, used to bump into Adrian while we were going, me and Byron were going in and out studios. And then, who's, who's there? Adrian. Who's there? Adrian. You know, that's how we became very familiar before I even joined the band. So, um, but within that, um, I, I was with a, I was with a, with, um, a little soul band, um, Soul Turner. I was with another band called, um, what was it, um, Sound Rebellion. 
We went to America in 95 and 96 with them nice little outfit, but there was a more, how we call it, rock, rock reggae. I did play, play the London Astoria. I did a play called Rainbow Uprising. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was a musical, three, three, over three hours musical. I got the lead role in it. You know, about mm. our experiences in the UK, mm. black experience in the UK, leaving the UK, going back to South Africa. And um, we did about six months rehearsal and did about 20 odd shows, including um, Sadler's Wells, Lillian Paley's. Yeah, and um, as I said, um, what did the other place I mentioned? But yeah, it was a nice experience. Good, good, good experience. Because I went to drama school when I was a little kid. So, uh, doing the musical, like, I didn't even expect it, but the, the finger points when the least expect it. So, hopefully, we're in a situation now that the finger's going to point again and again and say, hey, you guys, it's you guys. That's what we're looking for, that kind of energy. The whole idea of Hofstad environment is the way we grew up in, in this country. And when I was doing, when I was putting that in my mind together, I was just reflecting on what my mum, my dad went through, and I think they gave whatever it, it took. I think they really did. Because you could tell at times there's tension in the family and so on. And you know, you're going through your own schooling and your own problems as a young school kid. You know, as there was always a quite a few problems. I, I, I do remember being attacked at age eight. By a man with a hammer, a bit an adult with a hammer, you know, black bastard in 1968 on the high road, ducking and diving and running. Hostile environment. It's our, it's our past, it's how we grew up. Things ain't never really been smooth. That's it's just how we, yeah, the well, best way we can make it. You know, Theresa May was the one who coined that phrase. Oh, okay. And not really at the time. Okay. You know, because people just trying to make it difficult for people who used to come to the country looking, seeking asylum and things like that. And um, so they decided to create yes, a hostile environment. environment to receive them so they, won't come, so they won't feel happy and um, get lost. I've never forgot that. And uh, yeah, this time now. It's a hostile environment, and we're opening up people's eyes to it. All the